West Virginia, one of our nation's most beautiful scenic areas, has become known for its rolling hills and dense forests. It is a haven for campers and nature lovers. Anyone looking for the great outdoors need go no farther. Off Route 70 near Wheeling is a scene a little different from the everyday sites found in West Virginia. This is the Hare Krishna community of New Vrindavan. Nestled on 200 acres deep in the wooded hills, it is a community devoted to worship. The community is centered on two large structures. The temple is a large wooden building where the Krishnas worship, live, and eat. The Golden Palace is a beautifully designed building layered in leaves of gold. It exists to honor the founder of the Krishna movement in the West. But the town is more than beautiful buildings. It is completely self-sufficient, producing its own food and clothing. It is West Virginia's largest dairy farm. It is artists and architects, as well as the second largest tourist attraction in the state. But to the Krishnas, it is most importantly a center of worship a refuge from the outside world for raising families among those of their own religion. In Vrindavan, religion impacts every aspect of the devotee's lifestyle. There are obvious differences in diet, sex, and family structure from those in mainstream America. A family in Vrindavan is bound together by the same love, but with a different focus. This program will explain the way the family flourishes in New Vrindavan under the guidance of Krishna. The Krishna movement was brought to the United States by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada in 1965. New Vrindavan was founded three years later. After his death in 1977, leadership passed to His Divine Grace Kirtananda Swami Bhaktapad. While somewhat controversial, his teachings are the basis of spiritual life, and as guru, he is the heart of the community. The most basic statement you can say about who the Hare Krishna people are, are they're the people that chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Of course, if you want to know, well, why chant that particular phrase? Uh, that phrase contains three Sanskrit words, Hari, Krishna, and Rama, which are all names for God in Sanskrit. Hari means the energy of God. Krishna is a di direct address, meaning all attractive one. And Rama means the supreme enjoyer. The actual practical effect of the mantra is a cry to the Lord to please save me from this ocean of birth and death. The, uh, the role of New Vrindavan is twofold. One is that it's a place of pilgrimage. Uh, Prabhupada asked us to especially portray the pastimes of Lord Krishna here, that this could be a, past, a place to celebrate the wonderful life of Krishna in the Western world, just as Vrindavan is in India. And secondly, New Vrindavan is a microcosm. It's an example how any city, any town, any village can become God conscious, can carry out all the normal functions of normal society. There's working, there's farming, there's child raising, there's education. All of these things go on, but with Krishna in the center, God in the center. Everything is done for the glory of God. It's just like Krishna says in the Gita, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer, whatever you do, you do as a sacrifice for me. Bhaktapad is more than a spiritual guide. He permeates the entire life of the devotees. His edicts shape every aspect of daily existence. Well, the, the success of family life is easily judged 
by how all the members of the family are remembering Krishna. Krishna says over and over in Gita, always remember me. So the husband has to remember Krishna, the wife has to remember Krishna, the children have to remember Krishna. Now, specifically, of course, the husband will remember Krishna by working hard to provide for the family. The wife will remember Krishna by remembering that the children are actually Krishna's children and that she is raising them up to be Krishna conscious for Krishna. The children will become Krishna conscious when they always hear stories about Krishna, when they are always thinking about the pastimes of Krishna or chanting Krishna's name. Life in New Vrindavan isn't the same as in other American cities. The men and women don't live together, giving the family an entirely different focus. One such family is headed by Krishna Katad and his wife Samadhi. Krishna Katad is an artist, minister, and tour guide who has lived in New Vrindavan since 1979, becoming well-respected in the community. Uh, the paintings are all have a spiritual theme to them, just as everything we do in this community. So these paintings are illustrating a book, uh, a story of a man's life, seeking God, seeking happiness in the world, and all the frustrations he meets along the way uh, until ultimately he comes to realize God. So we try to keep everything in this community centered around the worship of God. Our whole lifestyle means Krishna consciousness, means consciousness of God. So whether you're a painter, a plumber, a carpenter, or a teacher, everything has connection like that. And here in the art studio, it's sometimes a little easier because you can concentrate for long periods of time on one painting that is taken right out of some scripture, or like we see the, the lady next to me was painting a picture of Krishna. So all day long, she's meditating on Krishna. It, it sometimes makes it very easy like that. Although art is not an easy thing to do, but uh, by Krishna's mercy, you can do such things. So we're focusing everything in this way. His wife, Sumati, is a college-educated woman from New York. She has been a Krishna since 1970 and works spreading Krishna's message. Well, I joined the Hare Krishna movement in 1970. Um, for many years, I'd been searching for something. I wasn't sure what it was for a long time. I had graduated from college. I had lived in New York City and worked. I traveled around Europe. Materially speaking, I had whatever I wanted. And I had a lot of friends. Everybody thought I was just a normal, happy person. But inside, I didn't feel happy. I really felt for years that there was something missing. And I had um, finally come to the conclusion that it must be spiritual because it, wasn't mat it couldn't be material because I had everything material that I wanted. So I started reading a lot of books about religion. I started going to Catholic um, catechism classes and reading Eastern books and Western theology books. And I was really attracted to the Bhagavad Gita. And, um, and then I started attending a Hatha yoga class in New York City. And at a meditation class one night, um, we were taught the different mantras. And the teacher just said, these are nice sound vibrations that you can meditate on when you're performing your asanas. And one of them was the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And I was very much attracted to this mantra. And I started chanting it regularly, not knowing what I was chanting. As far as I knew, it was just a nice sound vibration. But I noticed that whenever I chanted it, it, it calmed me down if I was in any kind of anxiety. It just made me feel good to chant it. And um, about two years later, I met the devotees. And I just found that here were people that were living a spiritual life. They were happy, they were peaceful, they, they were people that 
were doing what they said. I mean, I knew myself that I had to purify my life if I wanted to know, really know who God was. And, um, but it was very difficult to do, not being in the association of people that were living a pure life. When he came to New Vrindavan, Krishna Katad also brought his daughter Lakshmana. As devotees, their daily activities are dedicated to Krishna. The day starts early in New Vrindavan. The pacing begins the three-hour arti service, which directs the devotee's thoughts to Krishna. The men start at 4.30 in the morning, young and old, pacing back and forth, the devotees feeling that this simple chant is their best way to approach their god in today's society. Krishna is the center of the ceremony, but several other deities are also influential, the most important being his consort Radha. service is designed so the young devotees can be exposed to the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, which contains the basics of Krishna's doctrines. As the service ends, they prepare to move on to their jobs and responsibilities. During his talks with the many tour groups, Krishna Katad explains the belief in the spirit's journey to eternal bliss through reincarnation. And uh, this shows, uh, of course, most of us today have heard the terms reincarnation, karma. These are very popular terms today in America. And usually we think of reincarnation as well. You know, somebody was Napoleon last time, and now he's Joe Smith living next door, right? But actually, it's not that complicated or mysterious. Actually, reincarnation applies even in this very life. You see, we've already changed our bodies. Reincarnation simply means changing the body. So we've changed our body so many times. We had a little baby body, and the body keeps on changing, as you can see here in this diagram, this photograph. Uh, and it keeps on, and then eventually it stops. Now, the Eastern philosophy, in particular, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna consciousness, this religion, teaches that that's not the end. Just because the body stops, the soul will go on. Sometimes he may come back and take another birth as a human being, or he may go anywhere throughout the creation, but where he goes depends on what his consciousness is fixed at the time of death. Home life, everything has a very big effect on what happens over here, right? So similarly, everything we do in this life has a big effect on what's going to happen in the next life. Krishna Katad is deeply committed to his religion. He has tried to guide his family according to these ideals. So after having been married for some time with uh, Sumati, Sumati and I, myself have decided not to continue in the midst of family life, but to try to become more attached to Krishna, to God, to our worship in the temple, to our service to humanity, which means we go out and we travel and preach as much as possible about this philosophy. And at the same time, we try not to avoid the responsibility of looking after Lakshmana to give her some direction in life, to be there when she needs us to look after her. And whatever she may decide to do in her life later on, we want to remain 
very uh, connected to her as her parents, whether she decides to become a full-time uh, devotee of Krishna or whether she wants to become a, some person of the so-called material world. We're willing to uh, recognize that and be with her. So this is our um, duty now, is to become more attached to God, at the same time make sure our family life is developing. And we cannot, as it says in the Bible, you cannot be attached to both at the same time. So somewhere along the line, we're going to be separated anyhow, either by death or something. So this is a way of practicing for the inevitable. Like her husband, Sumati attempts to conform her life to Krishna's word. I was never married before I was a devotee, so I don't really know what mainstream married life is in America. And I... I can't really see where my life is similar to that. Most people that I know that are just living in you know, mainstream American life are engaged in relationships um, based on sense gratification primarily. It's a relationship based on I please you and you try to please me. But for a devotee, the focal point of their life is pleasing their spiritual master and pleasing Krishna. So a husband and wife in Krishna consciousness, they're not trying to please each other as much as they're trying to please their spiritual master and Krishna. For Lakshmina, life as a devotee has been challenging. The young people see Western society as a force pulling them from Krishna. Yeah, you try to go shopping or something when you're wearing these clothes and they're like... They look at you like you have ten heads or something. Yeah. I've lived, I've lived out there and I know, that, I know the way everybody is. I mean, I have friends out there. I, you know, I know, I'm just... I don't know, it's just when I'm here, we wear different clothes. That's it. And we, we go to the, to the morning program and... We're vegetarians. We don't smoke. Yeah, that's one thing. Drink. That's one thing. I'm, I'll always be as a vegetarian. It, even if I'm not living here. But I'll never smoke and drink either. There are two different paths the devotees face. For the children, the allure of society outside the community is hard to avoid. Like, when we're here, we dress like the way we're supposed to dress here, but when we go out, it's like, you know, it's, we wear regular clothes and everything, so I don't know. It's not like... We go somewhere practically every night. To so where? Sure. Weekends. Where do you go Whatever. every night? Like just places up out in town. Here, here within the community, right here. Where? <laughs> what you're saying, please. Like to the movies and stuff like that. I'm not sure what I'd like to do in the future. I don't know. My my dad wants me to get an education, a good education right now, so that I can go out and be something big in the world, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know yet. I'll probably go out and look at the world, but I think I'll always want to come back. Why? Because I was brought up here and I'm... The family pressures are easier for the parents to handle. There are several types of family arrangements in our community. There's uh, family life, which is people living together with their children. Uh, their children go to school, they come home at night. That type of arrangement is there. There are also people who send their children to school, and the children spend most of their time, they live right at the school and then they see their children on vacations, or of course they see them every day during the uh, temple functions, but they, most of the children's time is spent at the school. And then there are people who uh, live, as Sumati and I do, who are uh, living separate as husband and wife, but still have our children here. So this is a basically three types of uh, families, I guess you could call it, arrangements like that, that are all centered around the worship in the temple and the trying to cultivate the science of the self, understanding our relationship with Krishna, that's actually the center of everything. My relationship with Lakshmana is to help her, try to help her understand that she is a servant of God 
and that by um, chanting Hare Krishna and by serving the deities in the temple and serving her spiritual master, these are the things that will really make her happy and her life fulfilled. The, uh, my relationship with Krishna is that I'm his eternal servant and somehow or other I've forgotten that, therefore I've come to this world to imitate or play as being God. My good fortune is that I've got the association of Bhaktipad who has helped me to remember that actually my real position is serving Krishna and not my senses. Uh, <clears throat> and therefore as a dutiful father I have to try to convey that message to my daughter as well. Not that I simply let her do whatever she thinks she wants. Somehow or other I have to educate her to give her the chance to understand that there's more to life than simply eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Western society values individuality and longevity in family relationships. In New Vrindavan, this isn't the case. For Samadhi and Krishna Katad, there was never a question as to the focus of their relationship. I met Krishna Katha here at New Vrindavan, and then he went to Athens, Ohio to um, live at the preaching center there. And I started going down there once a week to help preach at the cooking class. And, and we just decided to get married and preach together. We went to Bhaktipad for his approval, and he gave it to us. The couple may move okay. towards sannyas, when the male leaves his family to wander as a monk. Well, Krishna Kata and I have been married for three years, and now we've decided to take on the third stage in spiritual life, which is called Vanaprastha, in which you take a vow of celibacy. Um, even throughout our marriage, it's been a marriage based on just being preaching together and being a, have a companionship. So we just felt that it wasn't anything difficult to do, and it was pleasing to the spiritual master, Srila Bhaktipad. He was very pleased that, he wa that we wanted to do it. And you just take a vow before the deities and before your spiritual master to remain celibate for the rest of your life. Yeah, the married relationship is meant to help each other understand and grow in spiritual life. And for me, I found it um, really helpful in just becoming more personal. I think in America today, so many people have a real impersonal, you know, people are, have a tendency to be very selfish and just think of themselves. But when you're married, you have to think of the other person and always, it's like a training to offer whatever you have to your husband, to your spiritual master, ultimately to Krishna. And ultimately, God is a person, and we have a personal relationship with Him, so it, it helps in understanding that relationship. And as for myself, my relationship with my wife has helped me to uh, further my increase in worship of God, to understand my relationship with God, in the sense that my wife is a very advanced devotee. She doesn't do anything but engage in service to God, and that's been a great inspiration to me. And uh, the, uh, the idea of taking sannyas is not a foreign thought in my mind. However, the real concept of sannyas is described also by Krishna and Bhagavad Gita as one who dedicates everything to the service of the Lord. So not simply just the mere formality of it, but the actual concept is that I hope that somehow or other I can always be engaged in serving God and when that day comes when I fully realize that then maybe maybe not I don't I really don't have any plans for that I really haven't thought about it too much but if he feels that he's ready to do it then I would want to encourage him and not try to hold him back it's a very wonderful exalted glorious stage of life in which one completely depends on the mercy of the Supreme Lord. So if, if he tells me that he wants to do that, I would I hope that I'll be able to encourage him. 
There is controversy in New Vrindavan. Bhaktapad defined his vision, but the question is whether the devotees can follow this path. Only spiritually are they and their families sure of what is to come. The whole concept of a spiritual life being based on rules and regulations or this order of life or that order of life shouldn't be taken as the prime thrust of the philosophy. The real idea is that each person should try to cultivate his own dormant love of God and that's most easily done in this age as we've heard many times is by the chanting of the names of God Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It doesn't depend on one's wearing this color cloth or that color cloth. In fact, just recently Bhaktipa was even talking about maybe changing our robes, maybe dressing in a different style to maybe make us look a little more part of the American culture. So we're not attached to the rules and regulations of this order or that. We're simply trying to make this message known to people that there is a way out of this bodily concept of life, and that's by the chanting of the names of God. And you don't have to be a sannyasi, a monk, whatever. Anyone who has a family can sit down and chant this name of God and get the same effect. What do I see in 10 years from now? I see basically the uh, same thing, chanting Hare Krishna, eating prasadam, serving God, preaching. Uh, it's an eternal process. I not only see it 10 years in the future, I see it for eternality. I feel the same. I mean, I hope that five and 10 years from now, I'll still be here helping Bhaktipad build the city of God and the Radha Krishna Temple of Understanding and hope that the same way as my husband, that forever my spiritual master will keep me engaged in serving the Lord. Everything in New Vrindavan, including the family, rests in devotion to Krishna. Only through him can they reach eternal bliss and salvation. <laughs>